Okay, good evening all, good evening. I'm just gonna let, uh, just a few seconds to let everyone enter the room and then we'll get this underway. As usual, it's nice to see some familiar names here. Welcome. All right, so very good evening from the UK. Uh, today we're going to be, or this evening, we're going to be looking at volatility indicators and uh, what we can use, how we can use volatility indicators in the financial markets. Now, just really quickly, by way of a quick introduction, my name's Aaron Hill, and I am part of the research team here at FP Markets. Uh, I've been involved in the financial markets for nearly 15 years now, and I remain just as passionate as I did back when I first read my first book on uh, trend trading by Daryl Guppy. So there should be no issue with sound or the slide deck as these were, as usual, double checked before going live. Do be sure to let me know if there is though, we have a very friendly support team in the background that will help you, uh, if we can, we can uh, it will help you get, you, uh, get things underway for you. So in terms of questions, it's fine to fire across, uh, across any qu questions you have during the presentation. But um, if it's something that you feel may require a more in-depth uh, response, uh, please consider waiting until the end of the presentation as we may, as I may clear up uh, queries as we proceed. Okay, so just really quickly, um, just really quickly, let's show, um, trade responsibly. Derivative products are highly leveraged carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. Features of our products, including fees and charges, are outlined in the relevant legal documents and are available on our website. Uh, really, guys, what this means is um, this is not investment advice, as usual. This is simply an educational presentation. So the agenda for this evening is, of course, volatility. So the first port of call will be this defining what volatility refers to. What what uh, uh, what 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 do we uh, what does volatility mean? Basically, um, we we'll then look at popular volatility indicators that are used by both professional and independent retail traders, and then we'll look at how we can use those indicators in our trading. And as I said already, there will be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Um, as I say in all of my webinars uh, and my presentations, any questions missed or those that require a more detailed answer, you can always email the research team at marketanalyst at fpmarkets.com and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Also, please do send across any uh, topics you wish us to cover in future uh, webinars. So volatility, I, I, I truly feel this is a, an important part of the presentation, namely defining volatility in the marketplace, because it's, I see, I see, I see many new traders confuse volatility and momentum. Now, if that's you, I, I then this may, this uh, presentation may help clear things up. So volatility is simply the the fluctuations, the fluctuations, just bear with me, I'm going to get the pen out. So volatility is simply the fluctuations of, of market movement. We can think of these as simply the ups and downs of, of a security or a currency pair. And it measures how extreme its price uh, swings are. So volatility is also a proxy for risk. OK, it's also a proxy for risk. I'm sure I'm pretty sure most of us have heard of this already. And what you find is that traders and investors analyze past historical volatility to assess future or implied uh, volatility. So let's imagine this is the price action of the euro dollar, uh, the euro dollar currency pair. Um, the higher price swings seen at this point here um denotes um so the higher price swings are referred to as a as high volatility and as as and and can be seen as a market for deriving profits but and this is crucial guys it's also considered a riskier market with uh, increased volatility so 
in, in investing, risk and reward go hand in hand, right? If you want the chance at greater gains, you, of course, have to accept that these investments carry greater risks. So turning our attention to the smaller price swings at this point here, this is referred to as a security or a currency pair as low as as having low volatility so as you can see low ups and downs low fluctuations low price swings uh, within the market and again this would be a less risky market than the one with higher volatility but also at the same time offer less on the return side of things so if you just <coughs> excuse me guys if you just bear with excuse <coughs> sorry <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> if you just uh, bear with me, I'm going to switch things over to our charts. And uh, <clears throat> so you should be able to see the euro dollar daily time frame right now. Just bear with me here. So just so we're all, all on the same page uh, in terms of volatility. So these are the price swings. Um, the, as I said, volatility, the price swings are different from momentum. So momentum measures the momentum measures the velocity of price changes and is measured by continually taking the price differences for a fixed period. So for a technical analyst, a simple indica indicator to measure um, uh, momentum is the rate of change, or as you can see here, the ROC. And this is simply calculated by subtracting the difference in closing prices n times. So this could be a, I think this is a 14 period, a 14, yes, a 14, um, a 14 day ROC in this example. So what we do, as you can see with the calculation here, we subtract the difference in the closing prices, and then we divide that by the um, by the uh, by the oldest value, and then multiply it by 100 to get us a a percentage value. So as you can see, the ROC is offering offers us a percentage uh, uh, value. Now. With the ROC, the rate of change, this can offer us trend identification and also offer overbought and oversold conditions. Now, as you can see, this is an, an unbounded indicator, um, an unbounded momentum indicator. So what I've done is I've applied um, overbought and oversold levels manually to this chart. So we can work with some form of overbought and oversold uh, system here. Uh, we can also add more advanced indicators in terms of momentum. Uh, we can look at the RSI. Um, so the RSI, again, is a, in this case, is a bounded indicator. As you can see, the overbought threshold is at 70. The oversold threshold is at 30. And we also have a center line. So with this, we can, have, we can look for divergences in momentum and price. We can look for failure swings. We can look for um, 50 center line crosses. And we can also look for the overbought and oversold uh, signals. And also with the RSI, we also have things that we, we can look for price patterns on the chart. So support and resistance and, and all that good stuff. Now, this is not a, a presentation on momentum indicators. So let's, I just really wanted to define momentum. So we all had an idea what momentum actually referred to before we move on to volatility. So this is. The, the again the daily time frame for the euro dollar and so that now we have a brief understanding of what volatility is and what it's not i'm going to now focus my attention on two popular indicators now on the screen we have the we have bollinger bands and on the next screen we will be looking oh sorry the following screen after that we'll be looking at the atr and um, both of these fit firmly into the bucket of volatility indicators among technical analysts. Now, just to be clear, I am not in any way, shape or form saying that these two are the best volatility indicators, though these are indicators I have personally used and continue to find use in during my own trading and in my own analysis. Therefore, first and foremost, let's check out what um, Bollinger Bands uh, let's check out what Bollinger Bands are, have a look at how they're constructed, uh, what they measure, 
and importantly, how we as traders and investors can use it to generate investment or trading decisions. So with the Bollinger Bands, these were, were developed, if my memory serves me correct, these were, uh, John Boll was developed by John Bollinger in the, in the early uh, 1980s. And uh, Bollinger Bands, I think that it was for commodities initially, and it was designed simply to evaluate price volatility. So Bollinger Bands have, needless to say, Bollinger Bands have proven popular among technical analysts. Now, just quickly, volatility is a, is a reflection of how much price fluctuates around a mean or an average price. So it is not momentum, which again, measures how quickly price movement rises in an uptrend, for example. Bollinger Bands, but let me zoom in here. Bollinger Bands are centered around a simple moving average. Now, the default period for the Bollinger Bands is 20 period, is usually 20 periods. So bands are applied a number of stand. So we have two bands and they're applied a number of standard deviations away from the average or the, the moving average value, the 20 period moving average. And two standard deviations are the default. So one standard deviation, just, just a, a little bit of context here, one standard deviation contains around 68% of price movement within the bands. Two standard deviations imply 95% of the price movement is contained within these bands. And look, we can pretty much see that's the case. A approximately 95% um, is contained within these bands. Um, so really, Bollinger Bands can determine if the currency pair prices are low or high compared to its moving average. So how can we use this indicator to perhaps generate trading decisions? Although some are against trading the outer bands. Now, I cannot tell you how many traders I've, I've, I've encountered that say they, they, they would not trade the outer bands. But for me personally, I have found use in trading the extremes of the Bollinger Band indicator when considered alongside the underlying trend, along with other indicators as well. So just to repeat, we are on the daily time frame of the euro dollar. Now, the euro dollar, guys, is one of the most is is the most widely traded currency pair. Uh, it's one of the most liquid, and uh, as I said, one of the most uh, um, uh, widely traded. So we have the euro dollar daily time frame, and I've applied the Bollinger Bands, and I've also what I've done is I've applied the Bollinger uh, the Bollinger Band uh, bandwidth indicator. I won't be talking about that just yet because there's another technique we can use this with, but I'll be just focusing on this for now. So let's remove those indicators just for the, for the, for the time being. So what I tend to do is I look for, look to define the trend. So I'm assuming most of us understand how to define a basic trend. So I'm not talking about moving averages. I'm not talking about the ADX indicator. Just bear with me. I think something went wrong there. Just bear with me. Guys, can you just confirm? <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Can you just confirm that you can still hear me? My, it seemed like everything just cut out then. Um, I do hope so. I'm going to continue speaking. So, yes, we have the Bollinger Bands on the Euro Dollar daily time frame. Okay. Loud and clear. Thank you very much, Zoran. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, so we have the Bollinger Bands on the Euro Dollar Daily time frame, just in case I cut out before then. And look, so what I look to do is I define the trend first and foremost. So the trend is your friend and all that good stuff, right? So I define the trend. So we are, so it really doesn't take much to know that we are in a downtrend at this point. We're looking for a series of lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Now, of course, the market is fractal. The market is fractal, meaning within these swings, there will also be uptrends. So if I zoom down to the M5 time frame, just remember we are on the daily time frame here. If I zoom down to the M5 or M15 time frame, the, the 15 minute time frame, you would see an uptrend here. 
Okay, so just bear that in mind if you are trading um, lower time frames and or multiple time frames. So I have to find a trend, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. So at this point, we are in a clear downtrend. So I want to look for points on the chart where price has over oh, so it's price has overshot um, and, and it's outside of its normal trading uh, range, if you will. So I want to see price close above the two standard deviations. And, um, and then I know we are in a potential trading, potentially overbought uh, scenario in a downtrend. So it gives me an idea of where to look for shorting opportunities. Now, it won't take you long to see, look, shorting opportunity, shorting opportunities all around this point here, short, 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 and then short at this point here as well. So obviously, price then transitions into an uptrend. And then we look for the long opportunity. So long at this point and long at this point. So it, it becomes a little bit tricky when price does this, right? It crawls across the lower band in an uptrend. So an uptrend, just for anyone that's unaware, is defined by higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and, 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 and things like that. And a series of higher highs and higher lows, as opposed to a downtrend, a series of lower lows, lower highs, and um, yeah. So we can have a long opportunity at this point here and at this point here. But this is where it gets tricky. As I said, it, look, no, no system is going to guarantee a, a superb entry every single time. And no system will ever give you a guaranteed win on every single trade. In fact, it's impossible to know if the next trade. That offers you a seventy percent. Um, that offers you a seventy percent. Sorry, guys. Yes, I see that. Um, sorry about that. I, I do see the comment about losing the connection. It seems like there's a there's an issue with Zoom because it keeps cutting out. I apologize, guys. I really do. Um, I do hope you're still getting this. Uh, so look, we are. Just just to summarize here, we look for a trend. We look for the lower highs, the lower lows. The higher highs, the higher lows. We look to define a trend on the daily time frame. But look, guys, you can use this on the lower time frames as well. I will show this very uh, in a few minutes. But just to be clear, we define the uptrend or we define the downtrend. Then we look to trade in line with the uh, trend at points where we where the Bollinger Band uh, tells us that we are um, we are uh, overbought or oversold in the case of an uptrend. So as you can see, potential long opportunity here. Let's go back a little bit and have a look what happened. So let's say we, um, so let's say here, clearly transitioned into an uptrend at this point here. Let's say here. So we transitioned into an up, uptrend here. So we have a high, low, higher high, higher low. So we could have potentially looked for a long opportunity at this point here. And at this point here, and maybe around this point here, and this point here. But look, at this point here, I would have been a touch concerned because look, we are now looking like we may transition into a downtrend, right? Because we've had a lower low. We've had a, sorry, a lower low at this point, lower high, lower low. So we are transitioning. It's an early sign of a downtrend. So this is a potentially risky long opportunity for me. Um, I, I like to see, I, I like when we have these setups where it's it's so obvious, you'd be foolish not to take the trade, if that makes, I hope that does make sense. It should be so easy to, it should be so easy to, um, what's the best way of saying this? It should be so obvious, it, it would be a, almost a crime not to take the trade, if that makes sense. So with this, if there's if there's any red flags, I would usually pull back. There's just no point. I always look to trade the to trade the rules of the system and the rules of this system. You need to define the uptrend and you need to be confident in the uptrend or downtrend. And at this point, I wouldn't be. It would be only at this point here after a, um, a high, a higher low and the subsequent um, uh, subsequent higher highs and higher lows. So here, this would be a, a potential area we could enter long from and trade to the outer bands. I hope you're getting this, guys. So if there are any questions regarding this, please do let me know. Um, 
I do hope I've not lost you again. Um, I do apologize for this. So this is the basic system of this. Right, what you can do though, is you can also include the RSI here. This is something I always also look to do as, whoops, I also look to do as well. So within an uptrend, I look for, or within a downtrend, I look for the hidden di divergences. So where price action takes the lead, if you will. So let me try and find an example here. Do we have an example here? So if you guys want to help, please do feel free. Um, because what you'll happen, it what will happen is in a downtrend. So let's let's go back to a clear downtrend. What what will happen is you you will very rarely see the RSI. The RSI is the bottom indicator. You will very rarely see the RSI touch gloves with the overbought the traditional overbought seventy threshold. What happens is gen uh, generally is we'll we'll have a temporary overbought an oversold, uh, sorry, overbought area uh, between around 60 and 50. So what you can do is you can use that as well. Now, for anyone that's uh, studied the RSI, you will probably probably be already aware of this. So in downtrends, you'll often see uh, the, the um, uh, temporary overbought form between the 60 and 50. And in uptrends, you'll see a temporary overbought form between 40 and 50. So in this case, we're looking at a downtrend. Let's zoom in. And now we're going to be looking for, let's go with this, a nice and easy setup. So we are clearly in a downtrend. We are clearly touching the upper band. We are, we've closed, marginally closed outside of the band. So now we're looking for shorting opportunities in line with a temporary oversold, uh, overbought signal. And now what you can do at this point is you could either take a trade at this point, or you could drill down even to the lower time frames and um okay thank you very much uh, claudio thank you so yes what you can do at this point is you can also drop down to the lower time frames and look for um a a a, a um an entry on the lower time frame so what you can do is you can look to confirm with additional technical tools that could be a trend line uh, on the lower time frames, a trend line break in this case. So it could, you could have a small trend line. I don't think I'm going to, let me try. Let's go, let's go and have a look. Let's see if we can find something at this point here. Okay. Let's see if we can find something. So let's go down to the H1. Let's zoom right out and see if we can find anything that's happened at that point there. I do hope it's showing. There we go. So this is the area where we we were looking to enter long from. So let's let's just remove the Bollinger Bands for the the moment. So this is where we're looking to short. So what I meant by a trend line, well, not technically a trend line, it's an ascending support. Is what you could have done is drawn this at this point here, and taken the short based on this area here, based on this break here. It's just that little bit of it. Uh, it a little bit more confirmation. So we already have higher time frame confirmation. We have higher time frame, um, a, a higher time frame overbought signal out of a momentum indicator, namely the RSI. We also have an, an overbought or an overvalued in, uh, um, confirmation from the uh, in terms of volatility. So volatility is overstretched, if, if 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 that makes sense. So it's going to spring. It, it's likely going to spring back to its uh, re revert to its mean. And uh, we've also got a minor H1 trend ascending line. This is not the trend line, guys. Uh, ascending line break at this point here. So this could be something else. You could even look for um, other technical uh, um, uh, um, signals. So for instance, we have the RSI at this point. We have divergence. It's clear as day here. Divergence signal setting up. There's a divergence at this point here. And we have higher highs at this point here. So there's a number of things. Again, this will this will really be uh, dependent on how you trade. So if we just go back to the daily time frame, now guys, if there are any questions regarding this, please do let me know, and uh, I'll happily get to those um, shortly. So another uh, technique is referred to as the Bollinger squeeze. I'm pretty sure if you've studied and spent any time studying. Bollinger Bands, you've heard of the technique called Bollinger Squeeze. It's a very popular trading strategy, 
but not really one that I've found much use in personally. So what it means is it's a period of shrinking volatility. Now, according to John Bollinger, um, it's often followed. So a period of shrinking volatility is often followed by a phase of expansion in volatility. Let me just remove this. Whoops. Sorry, guys. Just want to remove this so we're on the same page. OK, so this is the Bollinger Band width indicator applied to the um, lower panel of the chart. So a volatility contraction or band tightening is said to help forecast significant moves in either direction. Now, particularly when the, when, when the uh, outer band in either direction, again, is penetrated. So the Bollinger Band width, this, this indicator here, the Bollinger Band width is essentially the difference between the upper and lower band. So it's an indicator that really tells you the distance between these bands. So you can see this, okay? You really can see this. It just, it really does help. And I'll show you why it does. So the bandwidth indicator decreases as Bollinger Band. So look at this point here, let's zoom out. So we get a bit of um, context here. So you can see at this point here, we have range low. So we could say, Although not perfect, we have a, a low here, a low there, a low there, a low there, a low there, a low there. So we could use that as a range low for the Bollinger Band width indicator. So because Bollinger Band uh, are based on standard deviation, a falling bandwidth reflects decreasing volatility and a rising bandwidth reflects increasing volatility. So a narrow bandwidth is, of course, relative. So a bandwidth value should be gauged a relative to the prior bandwidth values over a, a period of time. So for me, it's important to get a good chunk of previous data to analyze the bandwidth indicators. So the idea really here is to look for periods of shrinking volatility, as I said. So I'm going to try and find an easy one for us. Um, so let's try, not really much, not really. So at this point here, as you can see, the bands are clearly, clearly um, shrinking. Uh, sorry, they're, they're closing in on each other. They're, they're decreasing in width. And the Bollinger Band is, uh, the Bollinger Band width indicator is touching its lower range, which means a decrease in volatility, which generally means an expansion in volatility will eventually materialize. So we, what we do, at this point here, we look for a close, a defined close outside of the range. So we have none of, none of that really here. This is not a defined close, guys. We're looking for a defined close. Not really defined. We're looking for something strong. Um, I guess you could say that was a close. So that would have been a very false signal at that point there. Um, but you could have taken maybe this one here, which could have been a, a short signal at this point. Um, but not really, again, this is not really something that I would have taken, I don't think. This is a nice one here. This is the kind of signal I would be looking at. So we can see we have a clear contraction in volatility at this point, a clear shrinking of those bands, and we're followed up by a one-sided bearish, uh, near full-bodied bearish candle at this point here. I mean, you cannot get much, much more bearish than that. So we're looking for a defined close at this point here. We're looking for the bandwidth indicator to be touching gloves with the lower range of the lower, uh, the lows of its uh, uh, range. So, and that is doing that at that point. So we have a short signal at this point here. Again, this is not something I use in terms of my trading, but I have seen other traders use it. And what they do is they tend to use this on the H1. I've seen it used on the H1 quite successfully by a number of traders. And what they do is they look for these, again, these, obvious, these very obvious contraction of volatility here. And then they look for the close outside of those bands. Again, guys, look, really take what you can from this. Look at this, a very defined close at this point, a very defined close higher. So we get all of these small closes higher. Um, um, that could have been taken as a, as a long signal, to be quite fair. Um, but this one is a very defined close for me. And it uh, could have been a long signal. Now, you could look for a, a, long, a long signal on a reversion to the mean. But look, for me, this is not something I would, I, I've ever traded personally, so I can't really comment. Just one thing I do want to add. 
regarding the system, the, the method that I did show you initially is you can also change the standard deviation. So if you change the standard deviation to three standard deviations, now, if my memory serves me correct, this would encapsulate or this would enclose a, nearly 100% of price action, to be quite fair, around 99.7%, if my statistics is uh, up to scratch. So what you can do at this point is you can look for the points within a trend here. Look at this three standard deviations. We get a nice touch to that line at that point there. We already know we're in an uptrend and we could trade, potentially trade that area there. We don't need to include the Bollinger Band width at this point because we're trading with the trend and we're looking for periods where volatility has over, over, overshot, if you will. So this would be a potential long opportunity for me. But as you can see from the chart, as is evident, there are less opportunities when you increase these standard deviations, which should be self-explanatory. But you have a nice shorting opportunity at this point here. Uh, not at this point. We didn't reach the three standard deviations. So we have one at this point and we have one at this point. But as you can see, they are all profitable, um, all profitable uh, uh, opportunities to consider. Um, I'm just trying to find another. Can you, um, here as well, we're in a clear uptrend, higher highs, higher lows, and we test the um, we test the th three standard deviation um, lower band for the Bollinger Band, and uh, we have a potential long opportunity at this point. Let's just quickly see what the RSI was doing at that point there. Um, RSI. I'm just trying to compare this tr uh, trough, this low with this low. So as you can see, this is what I was trying to say. To, this is what I was trying to show, but I couldn't find one. So we have at this point here, we have what's known as positive hidden divergence, where price essentially takes the lead. Price is showing, this is a momentum indicator, guys, just remember that. So what happens is price is essentially taking the lead irrespective, <coughs> sorry guys, irrespective of momentum slowing down but price is saying no 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 we are we are we are still higher and uh everything is telling me at this point here this would be a nice long opportunity just just quickly guys with the rsi we measure from the closing prices guys with the i see a lot of traders they measure from the extremes that's not true that's not actually accurate because with the bollinger bands how you calculate the rsi is through the closing prices not the extremes so we always take the um, the, uh, the divergences in terms of price action with the closing prices. Now, guys, are there any questions regarding this? If not, I will move on to the final part with the ATR. So the ATR is average, an average. It stands for the average true range, um, and this is a very simple indicator, and it is one of the most popular. Um, and widely used technical anal analysis indicators. And what it does is it tracks uh, volatility of a particular market. Unlike numerous other technical indicators, the ATR does not, does not indicate the market's price trend. It's not the ADX. Um, it's not a moving average. It only measures the degree of volatility. So it was originally introduced for use in the commodities markets. It has been applied to all types of securities since. Um, today, the average true range or ATR uh, helps traders define where to set stop losses and where, for me anyway, where to take where to set stop losses and where to take profit. So the ATR indicator was introduced by a TA, a technical analyst who goes by the name of J. Wells Wilder. I'm pretty sure you've heard of this gentleman because he's invented a number of uh, very cool indicators, including the RSI, which we've been looking at already, the relative strength index. He also invented or co uh, created the average directional index, the ADX, and the parabolic SAR. Right. How do we go about calculating the ATR? as I feel an understanding of the formula can really help. So the first pull of call is to calculate what's known as the true range. Let me just sort this up a week out. So the true range. Um, now there are three. So this is achieved by taking the greater of these three points. So as you can see, it's the current high less the current close 
the current high less the previous close and the current low less the previous close. So you're taking the greater of these three points as your true range. So Wilder designed the ATR with commodities and, of course, daily prices in mind. Now, commodity prices are frequently more volatile than most markets, um, and they were often subject to gaps and limit moves, which really occurs when a commodity opens up or down um, to its maximum allowed move for the session. Um, a volatility indicator based only on the higher low range of course, would fail to capture uh, the volatility from a gap or a limit move. Um, Wilder created the true range to capture this missing um, this ca capture this missing volatility. Now, I've tried to demonstrate that here. So, if we were trying to just uh, calculate the true range through the current high, less the current. There, there is meant to be a small wick here, but uh, let's imagine it closed on the end. I think they're called shaved ends or something. I cannot remember the technical term for this. Um, but uh, it closed on its low. So we have a, a, a low at this point and we have a high at this point. If we just took, if we wanted to find out the ATR for uh, this day and we only took the high and low range and did not incorporate this gap, we could, we're, we're, we're potentially missing, we're, we're not potentially, we are missing volatility. So what we would do here is the current high, current high less the previous close. Okay, so as you can see, current high less the previous close is larger or greater than the current high less the previous low. So we are we've encapsulated that volatility. Uh, that volatility. We can also take the low minus the previous close at this point here. So low minus the previous close. So quite clearly, the high of the current candle minus the previous close of the previous candle um, is offers the greater uh, of the three methods above there. So as I already alluded to, the ATR is not a directional indicator like the ADX, which is a trend-based indicator. It does not measure, uh, it does not pr provide direction. It's just simply a measure of volatility. So true range, which I've, which, I, which I've already discussed between those three points on screen, reflects volatility as an absolute level. So in other words, ATR is not shown as a percentage of the current close, and we always remove the negative sign. So please do not try to compare the ATR with other markets. So an easy example, this is something I remember from way back, an easy example to show this or remember this is through a high and low priced stock. So the higher priced stock will naturally boast a higher ATR value, right? Because it will move. So, so let's uh, say we're looking at a stock trading at $600, for example, against the stock that's trading at $5. The ATR's absolute values are just not comparable because the $600 stock may move $10 or $20. But the $5 stock, <laughs> it just won't move that. It just won't... Um, it just won't match that in terms of volatility. So comparing the ATR's absolute values is just not something uh, worth pursuing. Right. So how do we use this in our? Uh, sorry. Here's the current. Here's the uh, the calculation. If you're interested, the current ATR equals the prior ATR's value multiplied by 13 plus the current true range, which is measured through these three points here, divided by 14. If your period is set to 14, but as you can see with most charting packages, this will be done for you and it will be calculated for you. So how do we use the ATR effectively in our trading? Traders may use the indicator to enter and exit trades to put a stop loss in place. So as you can see right now, for the euro dollar daily time frame the current atr which is shown here at the bottom left uh, the bottom left hand uh, side of the uh, uh, chart we are looking at 78 pips for a daily atr that's one atr value so if you're taking a trade based on the daily time frame you would be according to the atr advised to have your stop at least around 80 pips to incorporate one ATR. 
to avoid being kicked out of a trade prematurely, if you will. Vice versa, when the indicator, when the ATR indicates lower volatility, so imagine our ATR shows a volatility value of, um, say, 40 pips. We may use a closer stop then. We may use a tighter stop at that point. As you can see, although the this is a volatility indicator, it's used as a very in a very very different way. Now, what you can do also, you can use the ATR as a take profit target. So, if we enter long at this dip here, we could then target two ATRs, three ATRs, or one ATR as our initial take profit uh, uh, target. So, if we enter at uh, the low of the session, around the low of the session, we can then target around seventy eight pips as our First port of call, our first upside target. Um, you may even have even heard of the uh, a trailing ATR stop. A trailing ATR stop is very, very um, is very um, is very common. Um, now, to be clear, this is um, we do have what's known as a chandelier. I think I pronounced that uh, correctly. A chandelier exit. Now, I, to be clear, I, I know we can down, download this indicator for MT4 and MT5 here, uh, but here on TradingView, it is rather, readily available. Now, as you can see, we are using the chandelier exit as a trading stop. But if you click on the settings, you can, you can um, modify the ATR multiplier. All this means is right now, that's 78 multiplied by three. So if we want that at one, that would obviously mean a whoa, a very, very tight stop loss. Okay. So you would want at least in this case, at least a two. And this is based on an ATR period of 14 guys. You would want at least a two period ATR um, stop loss as a trading stop. So if you're in a trend and you want to trail the market, you can use this as your, so you would have been taken out at this point. But if you enter long at this point, you would have been trading to around this point here. So it's just another way of trading stops. Look, it, guys, you can manually calculate this if you desire, um, but that's something you would have to um, do daily, of course. And um, yeah, so th uh, yeah, so this is something I would I, I would probably just use the chandelier exit. It's very, very good, very accurate, and uh, does the job nicely for you. All right. So are there any questions, guys, before I move back to the slides? Anything on the charts, especially with the initial uh, euro dollar time frame? I'll move back to the charts. Just okay. Move back to the charts. All right. So, first and foremost, thank you very much for sitting with me, uh, bearing with me for around 50 minutes. I do hope this has been of use, especially for anyone that's been looking at the ATR, uh, sorry, the Bollinger Band and the ATR indicators as, uh, as potential components to include in their trading strategies. Now, in terms of the following webinars. We do have one more webinar left for the month of April, and that's on the 25th of April, again at 5 p.m. GMT. And that's Trading Strategies for Beginners, uh, Swing Trading, Part 2 Swing Trading. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at understanding what swing trading is. Uh, is swing trading right for you? Uh, we'll also look at learning how to create our own swing trading strategy. Guys, please do consider visiting our Trading Academy. Now, that's been up and running for a while now. It has a number of educational videos, a number of in-depth articles. Um, it's something I always encourage newer traders to pursue if you're interested in the financial markets. We also have the FP Markets Traders Hub. Now, this is where we apply, this is where we upload daily market analysis, weekly market analysis, articles and all that good stuff. So it's certainly something to keep an eye on. All the links will be in the chat box, guys. Now, for any comments or suggestions regarding this evening's presentation um, or, or any suggestions regarding future presentations, please do either send your comments and feedback to support team at fpmarkets.com or alternatively, market analyst at fpmarkets.com. Um, 
I'm just going to check once more. Okay. Uh, guys, just one more thing. I do apologize regarding the technical difficulties regarding Zoom. I, I'm not sure what actually happened there, but uh, it all ended well in the end. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, have a lovely evening or, or afternoon or morning, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. And I'll catch you all again at the next presentation. Goodbye.